Hey everybody, Zachary Levi here, just outside of San Francisco, California, at world-class development studio Crystal Dynamics, whose current project is the reimagining of the Tomb Raider franchise. From now until the game launches, we're going to be hopping around the globe, bringing you exclusive first looks at some of the key ingredients that are shaping and creating this world. First stop, Digital Domain, Los Angeles, California, to meet one of the most crucial pieces of the Tomb Raider puzzle, Lara Croft herself. I'm Zachary Levi, and these are the final hours of Tomb Raider. Digital Domain. This is where they do a lot of mocap for big Hollywood films and video games like Tomb Raider. And today, we are going to meet the new Lara Croft, who is around here somewhere. <laughs> Teaser. And this. This is where the magic happens. I think that might be the new Lara Croft. That's the new Lara Croft. Since 1996, many actors have played the part of Lara Croft, but for the reboot of this franchise, the team conducted an exhaustive international search for someone who could bring a whole new level of emotion to a character who's become so familiar. In late 2010, a young English-born actress was chosen to become one of the most recognizable characters in video games. My name is Camilla Luddington. I'm a British actress living in Los Angeles. I am the voice and character of Lara Croft, the British heroine. When I was first approached for it, I, I really felt overwhelmed at the honor of playing an icon like Lara Croft. Um, I think I screamed in my car, actually, when I, when I heard that I got the role. Lara Croft, one of the most iconic female characters in all of game. This is really her origin story, how Lara became the super badass that she is in later exactly. years. She is just a young, naive, perhaps 21-year-old who has a thirst for adventure. We're used to seeing Lara Croft as just the cold-hearted, almost killer, and she's a badass and everything. But I think in this, you see her struggle. You can do this, Lara. Please come and get me. When we went through the process of looking for actresses the world over, I mean, this was Europe, this was LA, we had hundreds and hundreds of actresses that were whittled down, and we ended up with Camilla. She had sort of that rawness that we wanted. We, you know, somebody who not only wanted the part, but was willing to push her character into that emotional area that we wanted. Let's learn a little bit about Camilla. Where are you from? I am from a town in England called Ascot in Berkshire. And it's oh, like those things you wear around your neck. <laughs> really didn't do TV or, or film or anything until I got here in Los Angeles. But really, I had a stage background, which I also think helps though with this because this is almost feels like forming on a stage. Yes. Yes. So here we are. This is performance capture stage. The volume. The volume, they call it. Oh, that's interesting. You'll have to explain that to me later. I don't uh, know why. I think maybe it's like a like a measurement thing, like height and width and depth. I'm going to go that with yes. creates volume. Gonna, yeah. Oh, I'm not math sure. nerd. Oh. <laughs> and you also do get nifty props. Yes. And what's a fun fact about careful, this? Careful, careful, careful. Oh, you can hit somebody. Jeez. Wow. Is that um, <laughs> they'll put Velcro on this, and they'll be like, OK, you're going to have a gun and another gun, and they'll just stick to you. How much Velcro does a bazooka need to stay on tightly? Uh, a lot. There had to have been a lot of pressure as far as being the new Lara. It was intimidating. Did you go run around in the woods? <laughs> did you uh, I... go hunt boar with a bow and arrow? Well, what's funny is I actually did archery when I was a kid. It oh, was, really? Yeah. At the time, you're thinking, why do I need archery? You know, when am I going to use a bow and arrow? And, and now, now I know Interestingly why. Interestingly enough. <laughs> no. No! Is Lara a video game icon, a sex symbol? I think she's both. Oh. Obviously, she's a game icon. But I also think she's a sex symbol because she fights for what she believes in. Um, she's courageous. And I think those things are, are sexy. The shorts are gone. That's I, a <laughs> which I'm sure <laughs> most guys will think is a bummer. I like her new look. Yes, she's still gorgeous. But now she's a person. Camilla brings truth. She is truly uh, breathing life into Lara Croft. And when Lara is, is supposed to be going through this an emotional scene, you'll see tears streaming down Camilla's face, and it's real. People ran over to her, like, are you okay? Like, she's got mascara running and tears streaming down her cheeks. And she's like, oh, yeah, 
I, and you're like, wow. When I got this roll at first, I did not even know that I would be crying so much. I just thought I'd be kicking butt. That was, <laughs> that was the Lara that I thought I'd gotten myself into. This was some of the most emotionally and physically draining work that I'd ever done. This is the very first time I get to see this. have now seen Lara's first kill. What was that moment for you like? Intense, for sure. Probably one of the hardest things to film. She has to fight for her life. It's fascinating how she reacts to that. You know, she doesn't just walk away from that first kill. It really gets to her when you see her become Lara Croft. Camilla Luddington is our new Lara Croft. Strong, spunky, gorgeous, brave, how did she get so brave? Excellent question. We're going to cover that in our next installment when we sit down with the writers who crafted the origin story of Laura Croft. These are the final hours of Tomb Raider. We're in downtown San Diego. We're at Nerd HQ. Fans, the public, will get to play the game for the first time ever. Are you nervous? This is the most nervous time of the entire game. This is huge for us. This is the first time we're giving anybody the opportunity to put their hands on the game. It's not finished yet. It's hard to, to send it out into the world like yeah. that. It's a little young. It's a yeah. little fresh. When you put it in the public's hands, you're getting a very raw, unfiltered, like, hey, this is what we love and this is what we don't. You'll start to read about it now. You'll start to see it online. You'll start to get people's perspectives. We're making sure that we make it the best thing that we can for the fans. And these are the fans. Why make an origin story? You could just kind of continue with the Lara Croft Tomb Raider saga, but you didn't. Why? We didn't start with the idea of doing an origin story, actually. We started with the idea of doing something fresh. There haven't been very many games that have the opportunity to go back and tell a true origin story. There is very few games like this. In the history of the Tomb Raider franchise, there has not been a female lead writer until now, Rihanna Pratchett. For me, I didn't think of it like we needed a female writer to do that. Rihanna just nailed it. Rihanna Pratchett. Yeah. Does it take a woman to know a woman? It probably helps, but I don't kind of think about it as much as everyone else does. So I tend to think of myself as being a writer first. There is some of me in her, absolutely. She's very bookish. She's very in her head. I went to public school. I actually learned archery. Um, Camilla did as well, I heard. That we bring up our ladies properly. Um, <laughs> and I, I genuinely studied Egyptology. I wanted to be an Egyptologist. No way. You know, I've always been a huge fan of, of kick-ass females. I mean, I yeah. grew up on Terminator and aliens. Yeah. You know, fighting aliens in the future. I thought that was what girls did. It's great to be here at Comic-Con. This is my first time. People are really responding to this, this kind of new Lara. The fans have been great. They've been very supportive. I want to kind of live up to their expectations. I grew up going to fantasy and science fiction conventions. Now here I am looking at a Tomb Raider poster on the side of a building for a Tomb Raider game I have written. Can't quite process that, but it's very cool. Lara's actions affect her character and her emotional state, and so the first kill for us was a big thing. It's not comfortable to watch, and it, and it shouldn't be. And is about picking yourself up despite the fact that you're scared. You can't have bravery without fear. In video games, you're kind of tweaking all the way down to delivery. Yeah. Blessing or curse. Games development can be um, quite harsh on narrative. You know, you, you can lose levels or characters. You have to be amazingly flexible. When is the script finally finished? You get insight when you see it through your audience's eyes. Yeah. So once the story gets to a point where we can start sharing with people, where we can start putting it on the screen, then we start to understand, are people getting from it what we want them to get from it? The feedback is that it's really fulfilling our primary goals of delivering a story that introduces people to a Lara Croft, but also just takes them on an amazing adventure. <laughs>
John Stafford. You were kind of the, the dialogue typist, uh, <laughs> word monkey. The words that you've been speaking for yeah. so long Yes. Are so from this everything man. that I've been through that's been extremely emotionally draining and painful, I have him to blame for. <laughs> so we'll have words later about it. What were the challenges stepping into the heart and mind of a character like Lara Croft, who we've known for quite some time? Yes. Players of expectation is you want to just jump right yeah, in, guns yeah. blazing. Controller, I'm, you know, I'm awesome. I'm awesome. We that. That's what video games basically allow yeah, gamers right? to yeah. feel. I am awesome. The challenge for me is to show her vulnerable. We shipwrecked on an island inside the Dragon's Triangle. Still have a very playable game, but also show real emotional character. It's very difficult to do that in game. Please come and get me. You can do this, Lara. When you have really extreme circumstances, you have really extreme emotions. What the hell? Can't hide from me, it's all about her survival. She's basically willing to do whatever it takes. <laughs> There's people trying to kill you. Um, you know, things are really extreme. Listen. I'm gonna get you out of there. I promise. I promise that. I didn't want any lines to sound gamey. There was a good collaboration of making sure that really that didn't happen. That's very difficult writing, you know? How do you mm. write a line that isn't just like, I should go there, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, that's... I bet there's something hidden in that crate. <laughs> yeah. I want you to love this game in a way that, that really feels like the first time you played it, but do it in a way that people have never seen before. For me, it's it's crazy not to, to look at this as, as an opportunity to really start that dialogue. This is the game of our careers. This truly is the first time to sort of say, OK, this is it. Well, now that we know a bit more about what it takes to reimagine an icon from the ground up, we're headed east to go behind the sounds of Lara's journey, a journey that is heightened and shaped by cinematic score and sound design. I hope to see you on the next episode when we talk to who's behind what we're hearing in Tomb Raider. These are the final hours of Tomb Raider. The first thing we did was the theme. There have been many composers in the games or the films, but they've always used the original theme. They said, we want to start with a clean slate, a new theme. I did it on piano, very simple. I was really scared just to send it because I'm like, I don't know. I think this really works. I think I like it. We ended up taking that exact theme. The first demo I sent was on the first trailer, that exact same arrangement. So, Jason, currently you're working on this reimagining of Tomb Raider. When you're taking on a new project, mm -hmm. what are the things that attract you to that project? The, the heritage of a particular game, I think, obviously. And don't even get me started on Tomb Raider. I literally almost drove off the road. I was on the phone with the audio director. Like, oh, stop light! And I had to pull over a little bit to not hit the car behind me. What I loved about Tomb Raider, what really drew me to the project, was they had no pre-existing conditions. What because they do? wanted to get out of what mm -hmm. it used to be. They wanted something new. They wanted something fresh. Jason's done hundreds of games by this point. He was an easy choice for us to go with um, on paper because he has such great experience. I listened through a lot of different uh, material from a lot of different composers. I was really taken by how well he did the intimate stuff. The textures and the real, like, you know, intimate and vulnerable bits that we needed to highlight in the game were a great match for us. What is square one for you when you start wrapping your head around and going, this is where I feel like this world is going to exist? Main theme, call me old fashioned. Then it was a matter of finding out what kind of percussion would work. And always going back to the melody and the theme, because that's kind of the heart of the game. The most signature thing that we need to get right is Lara's theme. One of our big goals was that it can be used in any emotional context. What does it sound like? High action. What does it sound like when she's in pain? For music, the gameplay and the concept art, especially with the, the scavengers and kind of the shanty town, corrugated metal, how everything's kind of this amalgam of different stuff that they found on the island. Like, that's what I want the music to sound like. The bad guys are playing the music now. Alex said something like, it'd be really cool to have something, you know, chains on a metal board or like you're banging a metal fence. Two weeks later, Jason calls me up and he's like, 
So, this guy who's like this sculptor who lives right around the corner from me, I was talking to him about the idea of creating an instrument. And I'm like, that sounds completely insane. We have to do that. <laughs> Tackling the score to one of the most iconic franchises in the world brought a unique challenge. How best to capture the emotional timbre of the characters and island in music? People, I give you the instrument. The instrument. I was going to let Matt determine the aesthetics. I was really only concerned about the sound that the sculpture was going to make. Matt built this, which looks pretty much exactly like Laura's original homemade bow in the game. There's different timbres based on different materials, metal, glass. It's a direct line from the plot, the characters, the story, the environment, straight to the sculpture. We always wanted the island to have that character in itself. Creating an instrument gave it this unique identity. It's like got a, a voice. Yeah. yeah. The very beginning of the game is, is nothing but the instrument. Who do you look at in video games or in film that you go, what they've done has shaped who I am and what I do for a living? They're all dead, unfortunately. What? Yeah, I know. It's classical composers. All classical? Yeah, I'm kind of going directly back to the source. Yes, yeah, yeah. Prokofiev's Tchaikovsky. Uh, even for uh, some of the scary stuff, you've got Penderecki, who's a Polish composer. Actually, he's still alive. It kind of goes back to ballets or opera, mm. which is kind of the precursor to film and right. video games. Completely, you know, They yeah. were telling a story. Yeah. And that's what I love about that music. It, it tells a story. Even if you don't know the plot, you can listen to it. And film music's the same way. It's tough with games to do things that are subtle. We want to make Lara relatable, make her realistic. Another one. She went down over there. Tell her story from the beginning and show how she became the superhero she becomes. One of the first things that I ask any developer is mm. the emotion. Because mm -hmm. to me, that's the biggest thing that music can do in a tenth of a second. The music just, it nails the emotion. Well, wow, that was amazing, huh? I personally don't think I've ever sounded so good in an interview before. Although, Jason, Jack, and Alex are audio savants, so that would make perfect sense. I cannot wait to jump into this game, not just for the amazing action, but the emotion and mood and tone that they're going to set with their incredible skill. Um, tune in next time for a special secret announcement that is going to change the way you play Tomb Raider forever. See you soon.